So I'm excited to be here today. My name is David Marsh. I'm a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. Um, I've been at AWS for just under three years, and I work primarily with our nonprofits team, uh, but I also work with customers across our public sector teams. And uh, I have a focus on security, so I meet with a lot of our customers about security. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about how you can get secure access to your applications with AWS Verified Access. And I think that goes really well after the uh, zero trust um, information we just learned about um, from the other uh, excellent presenters there. So um, what this session is going to be is, is kind of a zoom out on the details of zero trust and more of a focus on a new service that AWS has here. So um, let me jump to the agenda and uh, I'll give you a quick overview of what we're going to do here. But um, first, we're going to talk about some of the challenges with connectivity that we see with our customers. Then I'm going to talk about how uh, AWS Verified Access, our new uh, service for um, zero trust access to applications, is going to help solve some of those challenges. And then we'll talk about some partners that integrate here and uh, can, can help you supplement the solution. And um, we'll give you some step, steps to set up and then uh, a few getting started links and uh, resources that you can visit after the talk today. So with that, let's jump in. So we, we just got a good, um, you know, thorough run, run through of zero trust uh, concepts. And so I wanna I want lay a little bit of groundwork, um, you, you know, explaining what zero trust means uh, to AWS. And so if, if we zoom out a little bit from, from the talk we just had and look at it at a higher level, um, zero trust is really a conceptual model that includes some mechanisms to help you achieve, um, you know, providing security controls with, with a focus here that these security controls are not uh, dependent on or tied to network controls or network perimeters. So um, what that looks like in practice is that um, you use additional sources to verify access. And then you have that continual verification where each time a request is made to your application, you are um, verifying that, that that person or that device uh, has access and, and has the appropriate access to the application. And so when when you remove this network perimeter, you have some additional challenges that you have to solve for. Um, so the, these things that we have here, the sources uh, that will help you verify the access and then evaluating that trust um, on, on every request is, is what's going to help you um, be able to eliminate that network perimeter um, you know, from that, that old VPN approach of saying everyone who has, has authenticated into my VPN has access to my applications. We don't have to check that every time. So we're moving to this process where you evaluate each request. So let's talk about a few use cases here. The first uh, is secure distributed users. So um, with, with verified access, users get access to corporate applications based on zero trust principles uh, from AWS and using multiple security signals like identity, location, and device security status. So verified access evaluates each of those requests, like I mentioned, in real time against the security requirements that you define in your policies. So next, um, we, we have this use case of managing corporate application access. So with verified access, IT administrators are able to define policies. They can onboard new applications all within minutes. And so IT administrators can use AWS verified access to build uh, these fine-grained policies that we'll talk about in a few slides. Um, using security data, like that device security status I mentioned, um, checking whether your security software on the device is up to date, um, and this is what we define to establish access permissions. So instead of fine tuning multiple policies across uh, different layers of protection, uh, like you might have done in a more traditional approach, you simply update the policy and verified access centrally, and that reflects the new requirements to access your applications, whether that's one application or a group of applications that you're applying that policy to. 
And next, um, you can accelerate your time to troubleshoot any issues. So with verified access, each access request uh, is evaluated, like I mentioned, and then it's logged. And so um, this includes all the security signal input that was included in that request to help authorize or deny the request. So this gives you the visibility to be able to um, you know, view these requests and enables the team to more quickly gather data, um, respond to some kind of event related to access to your applications, and um, you know, just more quickly resolve any issues that might arise with um, your connectivity to your applications. All right, so what benefits do organizations get from AWS Verified Access? Well, the first is an improved security posture. So a traditional security model evaluates access once and then grants that network access to all users. This can add risk to a business as bad actors could gain access to a customer's server and move across the network to applications that might contain sensitive data. While well, AWS Verified Access evaluates each request in real time, making it harder for those bad actors to move from one application to another. So um, I mentioned the logs as well. Um, so you have that centralized visibility. Overall, this is gonna contribute to a more enhanced and improved security posture. The next benefit is the end user experience. So Verified Access improves user's experience because they have the ability to access their applications from anywhere without the need for a VPN. It also reduces the IT operational overhead um, by reducing the number of support cases and issues arising from um, VPN um, difficulties and troubleshooting. And the next is uh, that you can simplify your op operations and you can do this in part with um, seamless integration of third-party security services. So, um, you know, the, these might be identity providers, device management providers that we'll talk about in a couple of slides, um, but, but these sources are providing data. They integrate well with AWS Verified Access to give Verified Access the information needed to make these decisions on whether um, someone is able to access uh, an application or is denied. So here we get a little bit of an architectural look at verified access. So there are a few things on this slide that I wanna highlight. And the first is that AWS verified access has per app policies to control access. Um, you can also apply group policies. That's another um, good way to do this is, um, you know, often teams are divided into groups. So we'll see uh, in just a second here, you might have a, uh, a finance team and you might have an IT team. And so you set up these groups and your identity provider, and then you provide access to all of the applications that the IT team might need in a group uh, policy that you attach. Now, if you want to get more granular, you can apply um, a, a policy directly to the application level. So maybe you need a specific policy for a certain application that the IT team uses that is slightly different from the rest of the applications. You can apply that directly at the, uh, the endpoint level. So next, uh, another big point here is those access logs that we're collecting. So these help you respond to incidents faster and can also set you up for uh, compliance audits. And then the third thing, um, one more time, is the integration. So um, these, these sources are gonna be critical in verifying um, the, the access to your applications, but there are also gonna be a few different um, use cases for these partner integrations as well that I'll talk about. Uh, on the next slide here. So as I mentioned, partner solutions are really important um, in an AWS Zero Trust approach because they're able to give us some additional information about our users, um, their devices, and um, whether or not we should allow access to applications. So. We talked a little bit about IDPs and EDMs, but uh, IDPs, uh, that's an identity provider. They're going to help to establish the identity for your users, and they will tell you things like what groups they belong to and what permissions they should have in your application. 
So when a request is made to your application, uh, the identity provider shares the, the relevant information for that user and either approves or denies that request. Next, we have uh, device management. So um, this is um, you know, where, we, uh, where we verify device status. Um, so maybe, like I mentioned, the software is not up to date or um, you know, other security vulnerabilities on the device uh, that can be used in context to help us approve or, or deny a request. Now, in addition to that, we have other um, different types of trust information, like contextual information. So this could include behavioral analytics, um, you know, the, the activity patterns of that user or device. Um, it could also include geolocation and um, a, a broad range of other contextual elements that we might want to consider in providing access to users. And then um, when it comes to analyzing uh, the, the access logs and, and data that you collect from the verified access service, we have partners who um, implement uh, SIMs or security information and event management systems or observability platforms. And you can use these tools to get a better view of um, the, the overall usage of verified access, how your users and devices are, are accessing your applications, and so on. All right, and so the, the big goal here with AWS Verified Access is to help you simplify the zero trust approach to accessing your applications. So um, as such, we wanted to make sure that the setting up process for verified access was simple. So um, to, to get started with verified access, first, you need to connect verified access to your trust provider. So this is where you share some information from your identity or your device provider, and then you establish that connection and allow AWS to get information from that source. Next, you create public endpoints for your application through the verified access service, and then you expose them to your users. So these endpoints can be load balancer endpoints, or they can be network interface endpoints. You get to choose. Um, but, but then once you've established those endpoints, you create the policies that you need for granular access, access controls, and then you attach those to the appropriate applications. So I mentioned these policies can be as specific as you need. You can utilize that context information that we talked about, the information from your trust or device uh, management provider. Um, so if you if you belong to a certain team, you have certain attributes associated with that identity information, you can use that to manage access. And then once you've done those things, your users are going to be able to access your applications from anywhere without the need for a VPN. All right, so now let's take a, a closer look at these policies, like I mentioned we do. So hey, Dave. More detail. Hey, yes. Hey, we've got about like two or three minutes left. So I would try and, you know, if you could highlight some of the key points, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. Wrapping up here, I got two more slides. So um, the policies here, I wanted to show you really quickly. You can apply these group policies to apply to all applications that you see in a group. So like I mentioned, the IT team here has um, applications four, five, and six. And that group policy can apply to all of them. But if you want, you can attach policies on the application level for more granular control between applications too. So you have flexibility in how you apply these policies. But a good starting point is to start with those group policies, write a group policy for your different teams and go from there um, to you know, further restrict your access as needed. And so as I promised, some more information to help you get started. This was just a, a crash course, high level introduction to the service. But here we have the product web page. We have a Twitch session um, that actually goes over the service. We have a link to documentation if you're really looking for a deep dive on the service. And then we have our uh, launch blog that, that talks about uh, the release of the service as well. So I'll stay here for just a second and let everybody uh, scan these codes as needed. Um, but then we can go ahead and, uh, and wrap it up and uh, open the floor to questions. <laughs> 